Welcome to the channel, folks. Clunkers and Classics. And happy July 4th. I'm going to be out here for a long time because uh, got to watch some fireworks and make sure they don't catch my property on fire like they did a couple years ago. Almost, almost burnt the place down. But anyway, um, rolling along on the 77 Malibu Classic. Last episode, we started on the doors. We got this door on there, rust-free, but dented <laughs> doors from the parts car. And uh, I showed the, I sure hope you watched the last episode. We'll go over some of the stuff, but the doors that were on it were just rotten and bondo. And ugh, here's the passenger door I took off. Just a complete piece of garbage you guys from up north are probably used to this but this doesn't happen down here which is a rare thing because art used to like he's in texas he liked driving down on the beach i'm not sure exactly which beach he was talking about whether it was galveston or somewhere padre island something like that but every day for decades he'd drive up and down the beach picking up chicks or whatever he was doing down there and that's what happened. All the salt air just rotted it. The whole car even rotted the roof. So he, <laughs> he brought it to me 10 years ago. So oh, can you fix the rust? So yeah, we did uh, the floors and the trunk. And then I started looking at it without doing this, taking a hammer to it. I said, Art, your car is just rot a rotten mess. I mean, the quarter panels too were <coughs> just all all rotten and patched up and everything and I started patching up the quarter panels for them and I, I started looking put my thumb through that hole and I said Art your car is just a fucking mess I said you need quarter panels you need a roof you need doors you need so anyway <laughs> I bought the car from him because he finally gave up on it after 10 years. He was supposed to be finding parts and all that, and he one excuse after another. So it's mine now. So I came across that car a year or so ago and uh, decided to use it for a parts car. So here we are. Luckily, got two great doors. Here's the driver's door that's fixing to go on it. Last episode painted the jams. As you can see, nice rust free <laughs> got the mirrors painted there we're gonna put them on uh, so uh, ended last episode just bashing the shit out of this <laughs> door <laughs> see it's like the other one um, this whole corner here was just bondo just made out of bondo you know just so rotted out and see it had all cracks and bubbles, Bondo rust bubbles all on the outside. That's when I told Art, and you start looking here, and you have to go way up here to see the door skin line. Then all this, they just all Bondoed. And I said, Art, I said, I think your car's been rotted right out. And that's when he said, oh yeah, well I had some body work done years ago. <laughs> I said, yeah, well. So, were last episode we did the passenger door i went over it in detail uh this car is power windows the door off the part doors off the parts car are are manual and we're converting them to power uh so all we got to do is change over the regulator this is the regulator here and the power motor bolts onto it there's three bolts there you, gotta, you can get to them actually from inside here. Oh, and this power motor's been swapped before. Instead of rivets, I got four bolts. <laughs> Passenger side was factory. Had the factory bolts in. It's, she's all loose. That's what happens when you put nuts and bolts on there. And it's got power locks, but I don't see the uh, deal 
for the power lock. So I just took the door panel off anyway, guys. The door panel's right here. We'll go over that here in a minute. Uh, okay, it's on there. Okay, it's on there. Here's the... Okay, they got the wire on the inside. Okay, and that's been changed before, too. You know what? I think this door's been changed. It's supposed to have been silver. This looks black. Well, regardless, uh, these power windows work, but you gotta you gotta grab them and pull them up and down. This one I just pulled down, and uh, well, it went down a couple inches, and then I had to push it. And uh, boy, she sounded crunchy. I think this door got the worst of it for rust, so all these tracks and guides and everything might be all rotted. Uh, we'll find out when we take it apart. I'll show you all that. And uh, we do got to change the regulator. Like I said, the little wind, the wind up deal here, right here is different. See, you take them four rivets off and you got to change that hole. I showed that all last video on the passenger door. You got to do the same thing on this one. So once we take all that out, we'll see how rusty and crusty all this stuff is. And we got to swap what we can. And this door, I don't know, look, there's welds here. <laughs> oh, shit. It's a, it's a mess. But it's going to be... It's going to be nice when I'm done with these non-rusted solid doors on there. Okay, so... Yeah, the other side had the uh, power lock wire on the outside. This one's tucked on the inside. Not exactly sure. Let's see. Okay, it's this one. This one right here. Uh, this kind of rigged up here. I'm going to have to fix that. That's kind of rigged up. Everything's been... But it did work. Okay, so we're going to pull all the wires out through here. And then just unbolt it. Right here, these three bolts there. There's all three in there. Yep. Boy, I bet they're going to be crunchy. Rusty and crunchy, too. Uh, so we're just going to leave these hinges on. On it. Because you can't you can't get it, take off these ones off the pillar unless the fender's off. And right at this present moment, I don't feel like taking the whole front end off. So we're going to leave these on here. And then we're going to check the pins and bushings. Uh, I don't know if I got some on hand. I got some coming from eBay, but it still might be a couple of days away. And we're just going to rebuild the pins and bushings on here. If, if I got the parts on hand right now. And then we can... Uh, well, it's easier to do this door, swap this motor and regulator while it's laying flat. So we're gonna take this door and lay it flat on that tire, then disconnect all the regulator regulator and everything. And then uh, same with this door, and then put the, the power window regulator and everything into this while it's flat. Because that glass, trying to hold that and position that glass staying up while you're doing all that, uh, it, it's not fun. So, if you watch the last video you know, you know the procedure so we got to put uh everything in there at that door and then we can bolt it on and we put the other stuff on later the mirror the belt molding the weather stripping uh, we can put all that on after after the doors bolted on so anyway guys that's the plan i just figure i'd let you know what the plan is and when i come back it'll be done because we have already showed it last video or i'll show you yeah I'll show it to you laid out on the tire here. Okay, what else on this video we're going to do? So I'm pretty happy with the passenger door, but after we did the pins and bushings, it didn't line up very good. So that hinge that's on the pillar right behind here has to go forward just a hair. And in order to adjust that, you got to have this fender off. And we're going to be changing the fenders and the... Uh, uh, radiator support. This fender's not bad. I think it's been swapped before, 
It's just got a, it had a Bondo hole, a rust hole filled with Bondo and I banged that out, showed that last video. But I, they're a different color, so I think they've been swapped before, but they're still rusty. And uh, the ones off the gold car are non-rusty, so we might as well swap them. So this, this door here just needs a little minor adjustments, so I'm, but I'm pretty happy with it. This door, I'm expecting the same thing, but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to all the adjustments and everything later. Okay, the door panel. I've got one can of this Firethorn Red. You can see how faded out the top is. That's probably what we'll do on this video instead of getting to the front end. We'll save all the front end stuff for, for another video. Uh, at this point, that's what I'm thinking. So what we'll do is uh, clean these up. And you can see he's... he's had it painted painted before some vinyl paint we'll sand all these up and uh, paint them uh, then I got some I got a whole bunch of stuff from eBay coming so I got this red dye and we're gonna test out that dye and see if it works on this and on the, the center seat deals there they're supposed to be red so or light red or something uh, so yeah maybe we'll just do that on this video try out the die paint the door panels and that way we can get everything done except maybe just the final adjustments on them deals I, I don't want to be taking nothing off again once I put something on there it's staying on I don't, I don't take stuff off two three four times uh, so uh yeah maybe we'll do that this video anyway that's the plan so far so uh yeah let me take this uh door off and i'll be back and show you okay guys i got it off okay took that little spring off of this tool very handy little tool spring that goes there uh, this little deal came off here, but I think I don't know if I can get that back on. Anyway, you can see the see the bushing pushed up through here. Well, that's actually that one, top one. So she shot. Uh, bottom one, same thing. There's the bushing there. It's pretty bad. I had enough on hand to uh, change them over, but I don't know if I got enough now. I got the pins, but I don't think I have the right bushings. Uh, okay, check out the bottom of this door and give it some more wax. Here's the, <laughs> look at that. Got some rust bubbles coming up. Yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> yeah, she's uh she's pretty bad and everything in here is all rusty. I could tell when I was doing pushing the window down. It was just crunchy. Everything's well, it's been sitting for so long. It's been sitting here for ten years. And I think his last inspection was 07. So he hasn't really driven it very much in, you know, 20 odd years. And, uh, but yeah, anyway, she's a, she's a real mess. Okay, let me, I already took the motor off. I had to get the motor off to unplug it. Those plugs are a bitch to get at. So there's the motor there. Uh, so we got to do is take out this regulator. Uh, might be a little difficult. I don't see how there's any room under there to get a wrench or anything to hold that. May have to grind them off. But anyway, I won't bother you with, with all that stuff. We got to take off uh, a few other little things there to 
get this out of there. I'll just probably just go ahead and take a whole bunch of stuff off. This, this door is now junk. I'll take the mirror off, take the glass out, take the glass out of the passenger. Passenger door here, and that's ready to sell. <laughs> Got a back window and a passenger door window and a driver's door window. Okay, so let me take this apart and I'll be back. It'll probably be dark, but I'll show you some fireworks. If there's a bunch going off, but it ain't quite dark yet. They usually have good fireworks over in this area here. I just hope none of the neighbors light my shit on fire again, but okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, sounds like a war zone over here. All the fireworks going on. There's people there, people over here. It's usually big ones coming from here, I think from a business down there, but uh, doesn't look like anybody real close. Anyway, tore it all down. Uh, this is the main thing we need here, the regulator. And uh, yeah, she's pretty rusty. And I got this 3-in-1 oil. And I'm going to... I'm going to let this soak all in everywhere. Turn around, do the other side. And uh, spray a bunch of WD-40 and stuff in there. Uh, later on. So anyway, that'll be soaking <laughs> probably for the night till the morning. And then we gotta take them rivets out and put put that into here. Yeah, she's uh she's pretty rusty and crusty in there. Look at the uh, even the uh, door brace is all rotted. Yeah, look at look here. I'll show you tomorrow better. Yeah, this door took the worst of it. But I think it's been changed. It either almost looks like a blue or a black. But they had, they put a worse door on it than, than what was on it, I guess. Anyway. I'll probably get to them bushings. I showed them last video. How to do them. Uh, see if I got any. And mess around some more. So I'll be back. Well, figure as soon as I turn the camera on, <laughs> whole bunch of fireworks over there, over here, and all over. Ooh, yeah, they got some big ones over there. These people over here, I think, have started my property on fire two years ago. Property goes all the way over there in the corner. Well, shit. So when I was visiting my friend in Weatherford, Texas, he has a couple acres out in the country. And uh, I don't know how it came about. He was talking to a fireman. The fireman says, hey, he says, this is America. You can shoot off fireworks. He said, yeah, this is America. You can shoot off fireworks in your property. He says, but, he says, if you uh, light your neighbor's field on fire, and I got to come out there, he said, it's $60,000 a pumper, and I usually got to bring two pumpers, he said, plus uh, some other, I forget what the other was, but that's 120 grand there. And he says, uh, yeah, he says, uh, and if you don't pay it, we'll just put a lien on your house. 
So, uh, yeah, but this is America. Light off fireworks all you want. <laughs> and he hadn't lit off any fireworks since. He's, he's had the place about as long as I've had my place, about six years. And he used to light fireworks and post pictures on Facebook all the time. And the last few years he hasn't. <laughs> Because of that so yeah I don't know we have a volunteer fire department that came out and uh, when my property caught on fire the people were over there trying to stomp it out with their feet but it was way too big and then I called them called the fire department and uh, shit by the time they got here it was all just like I said the trees were flaming it's pretty damn close Another 10, 15 minutes, I would have got into my cars and stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. I didn't go talk to them. They were out on the street over here putting it out. There's some fireworks over there. So, uh, so I don't know if they charged them. <laughs> Or them people st stood around and when the fire truck came they probably took off. Who knows? But yeah, there's so many trees around here and dead branches and brush and everything that I can't keep up picking up all that stuff and burning it and stuff. There's trees falling over and uh, so I hear something, sparklers or something on down here. So yeah, there's, anyway, if it doesn't rain for a few days a lot of dry grass and timber around there's a few houses over here I don't think they're lighting anything off but <laughs> sounds like a thunderstorm but Yeah, there's acres and acres of property across from me that's just open. If the fire ever started over there, more over. But anyway, I'm trying to work and keep an eye out for fires. Okay, I'll be back. Okay guys, next day. It rained a little bit, but uh, it's actually nice today. It's cloudy. I think it's going to be cloudy for the next four or five days because of that hurricane or whatever it is. Okay, I forget where we left off, but uh, I got the power motor regulator in there. Uh again like the other side i put in two nuts and bolts there and then i need a rivet there and there this one i ground a little too far i'll probably put a washer over that okay uh took off these hinges here the bushings go is that bushing still in there i don't think so uh anyway bushings go in here and here and like the passenger side the big one goes here and then the smaller one goes here and two small ones oh that is still in there isn't it i don't know if that's i don't think that is a washer i think it's just beveled in there a little bit okay so i had ordered all that stuff from online and uh it's not here it's you know their post office closed july 4th most places are closed on the 5th which is today just like i went to pay the water bill now they're closed 4th and 5th okay so uh i went down to AutoZone. well first i got these rivets here from uh harbor freight 
So these are the big rivets I need right here. Those are the ones that fit, and I've cut off a little piece. I knew they were a quarter inch, but uh, those are the ones that fit in there. Okay, and... You got this little package. Well, they all fell out. All right, anyway, this little package here was only $3.99. And these are the uh, ones that fit up. You gotta fit them up through the bottom. But basically, they're the ones that go there. And it goes in there like that, so. Uh, then we need one, and I had one, one left over. For my little stash of stuff here. So anyway, and then these I had left over too. So that would go in there like that's actually the that's actually the bottom one. So the pin would go through. Go through like that, but once you get them bushings in there, they'll go through. Okay, so I'm going to put them two together, and then I think we can put the door on. Um, these, these have been changed before. These aren't the right uh, bolts. This one ain't even tight. So somebody swapped these, jacked them around, something. I think those two are the right bolts, but that one isn't. The most we can do is bolt on the door. And we'll have to adjust it. So you can get at these bolts here, but once you have the hinge and the door on, you can't get at them bolts unless the fender's off. So the only way to really adjust it is to put this on the door, bolt it on the door, and then adjust these. And by the way, these are been monkeyed with before. Yeah, it's gonna need some adjustment. Uh is there something here? Yeah, there's rust bubbles right here. So, the fenders aren't bad at all, but we'll probably replace them since we got to take them off anyway. So let me, uh, and then I got to put two rivets in that door. So let me put the two rivets in there, two rivets in there, bushings on here. Then we'll bolt up the door, start hooking up the electrical, and go from there. So I'll be back. Okay guys, this is the type of rivet gun you need. There's a big kahuna here. Uh, and I just make sure that's really real flush in there. Then, uh, well, I may have to tap that down a little bit. But yeah, that's, uh, put it in there. Gotta use both hands and really pump it. Get that in there. Okay. I'll be back. Okay, I got the uh, I got the new pins and bushings in there. Again, put a little tack weld there to keep that from uh, falling through. And I think they had this one up through the bottom, but anyway, I'll put it up through the top. And it'll be all right. Put the spring back in there with the little tool here. Okay, I'll be back. Okay guys, I got the rivets. Put a little black paint around there, keep it from rusting. I don't know if I showed you this door in the daylight. Uh, yeah, there's the, there's the bottom. She's a rusty mess. But look at this rebar here, all rotted out. She's uh, pretty messed up. And look, it was all rot, rotten in here. Where it joins together. A lot worse than that passenger side. So, yeah, anyway. Oh, it's starting to spit out a little bit. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, I got the door up there. 
Okay, so I don't have the electric motor connected to the regulator. Uh, motor goes right there. So if you don't attach it, you see where the teeth goes right there. Then the motor, then the window should go up and down freely if nothing's binding. So it, you know, it does. Uh, it's got a little bit of a problem here. This door's cracked. See this crack here? See it flexing? You gotta weld it up there. And then, uh, there's a crack down here, which I don't think is no big deal, but not sure what caused that, but something was bound up and okay, so I'm gonna put some more lube in there and make sure that window goes up and down really, really easy. That way it won't be the motor's fault. Okay, uh Okay, so it's really tight right there. Little, little wide there. So that means the door needs to go this way a little bit. But those aren't the hinges we put the bushings and stuff on. Those are the hinges that are bolted to the pillar. Both them need to be loosened up and the whole door moved over, then tightened back up. So we can't do that unless the fender's off. Uh, but other than that, I think it's pretty good. It's pretty flat right along there. Uh, I got the rubber, door rubbers in, weather stripping. Uh, we'll put them on later on. Uh, so those hinges that I bolted the door to they just make the door go in or out and now it looks like it this one it was way in here and I just jacked it up and used that piece of wooden hammer and pounded it and that's as far as it, as it comes out so it is pretty flush there but it looks like it needs to go in just to, or out a little bit up here but I'm not gonna worry about it too much till we get the fenders on there so anyway, it lines up pretty good. You can see there's some dents on this one too, right in here. Right in here. So, uh, what I'm gonna do is lube up the tracks some more. Um, yeah, this, this here was worn completely out, right down to the metal. I put that on from the from the other door. This one seems to be okay. See, I think the whole well that anyway I'm gonna put the belt molding on there, the mirror on there, uh the lock. You got it the same as the other side, gonna drill a couple of holes, put the lock in there. Uh I gotta figure out this this wiring here. So you had it kind of a sophisticated alarm or sophisticated for the 80s and see this red wire is just blocked off and it looks like it went to this now what I th so I don't know what this white wire is he, he has one on the other side too it's over there that white wire and I don't know if that was to keep the windows from going up and down when the alarm went off or automatically made the windows go up. It, it might have been one of them deals there where you hit the button and make the windows go up. Uh, but I took off, he had a bunch of wiring up there. I just snipped it all. He had some little red lights and all kinds of stuff. I snipped all that off. I snipped the... Uh, siren or horn or whatever it was up there big box i took that off the firewall so i think that we can probably connect that back to this now what what all this stuff is we're going to have to connect them better 
uh, on both sides. I mean, it works as it is, but uh, we'll just test it out. Maybe it's maybe it's losing some voltage, and that's why it needs a direct connection to make it go up up and down faster. I don't know. Uh, but anyway, that's all the stuff I got left to do on this door. And uh, so let me finish up all that little stuff, and uh, then after that we'll. I'll bolt in the new motor and that's a plug for it right there we'll plug that in and then these are just for the uh, switches that's for the power window switch that's a power door lock switch we'll hook them up and give her a test okay so let me do all that what I said and uh, I'll be back I need to put on some wheel bearing grease along them tracks too, both sides I lubed it up with uh, that three-in-one oil and WD-40, but I, I like to put some uh, wheel bearing grease in those tracks and down in here, this track here too. So let me do all that and I'll be back. Okay guys, I think I got her all together. Got the lock in there, got the belt molding on, welded up these areas here, tightened up that even more because it was had a lot of slop in it. Uh, I got the new motor on, but before I did, I lubed up everything and made sure that window went up and down so easy. Then bolted on the motor. So I hooked up the switch here. And, uh... So it's going to go a little slower going up because the car isn't running. These, these motors or the, the electrical system in general on these cars work better once it's when it's running but yeah so I didn't quite do that to the other side when uh, before I put that motor on but I can do that I'll do that and test it again just up and down up and down on the windows so anyway uh, like I said, I'm not. I'm gonna get a electrical tester there and see if there's any power coming out of there. It works the way it is, but I don't know. I don't know what they got going on. Anyway, I'm happy with it. If we can get the other side moving up and down like that. That'd be great. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'll be back. It's fixing to get really dark. I know it's probably d kind of dark on the camera, but it's fixing to get really dark uh, here in a few minutes. But let me get some more stuff going on, and uh, maybe we'll sand down and paint these door panels. Or might wait till tomorrow. Anyway, I'll be back. Okay, guys, next day. Uh, weather's going to be. Uh, about 10 degrees cooler than it has been. It's been about 100 every day. It's going to be in the high 80s, low 90s. It's supposed to be cloudy the next four or five days. It is kind of hazy, but that sun, it's starting to, it's it's pretty bright right now, but it's uh, cool out. Uh, at night in the morning, it was like 69 degrees or something so instead of 85 90 in the mornings okay so anyway trying to get a bunch done wrap up the little stuff uh i wrap i had to put some solder connections and wrapped up these wires that one red yeah the red wire that went to that it wasn't having no power there was no power to it so they somehow bypassed the power to the red one, to the white one. But anyway, it works. <laughs> I just seen this window rolls up and down great. Uh, I just had the car running and uh, lubed up all the passenger side again. And uh, it goes up and down great, especially when it's running. You're running up and down, don't have to help it. Same with this window. I just finished putting uh, all poor 15 all in the bottom areas door jam areas of it 
both doors. Uh, what else did I do to this one? I think that might have been it. Uh, this one I put the mirror on. Said I lubed it all up. Lubed all the door latches and stuff too. Uh, this one I get a... See? This is... They got the same thing here. See? There's red wire. It's supposed to go here. And instead they got a white wire going there. Uh... You know, unless they're both supposed to be connected to it. But, see, on the driver's side, I, I put the electrical tester and there was no power coming from this, but there was from this one. Uh, but unless they're supposed... But anyway, it works without that, so I'm not going to... I'm going to wrap these up a little bit better and then wrap this thing up like the driver's side. Like I said, I poured $15 in there. Uh, just lubed everything up, all the latches, just everything. So yeah, guys, uh, if your power motor's really slow and uh, doesn't work, you can't just put in another motor and expect everything to be perfect. You got to lube up all them tracks, all the little, everything, everything you could possibly think of in there. Lube it up with, uh wheel bearing grease and three-in-one oil and wd-40 just soak everything uh so yeah uh, oh i just gotta i'm gonna cut the ends off of that in case it hits the door panel so i think that's about it uh i'm pretty pretty sure the doors are done now doors are done other than final adjustments to move them hinges forward a little bit okay been getting some stuff in I thought I got this. Okay. A bunch of comments about this fluid film. I got this off eBay. Uh, I, I've never used it before. Powerful rust and corrosion protection penetrant and lubricant. Protects all metals, lanolin base, superior lubricant and all solvents. Uh, I don't know. I've never used it. But we're going to try it. And it's supposed to seep down in. So what I'm going to do is uh, it's got the little deal on it like a WD-40 tube. And I'm going to spray all in around the wheel wells as much as I can in there. And then we're going to come in here through the door jams and spray it all in there. So hopefully what it does is even though I got paint and stuff in there already much as I could spray it you know I sprayed a lot of it so it would seep down in there but this stuff is supposed to be when you spray it down in there it, it just seeps down so hopefully it gets all in and around the wheel wells there I guess you could probably use it for these doors too but I really packed that poor 15 on and all the edges there uh, so anyway I'm gonna do that um, let's see I didn't get a lot in the weather stripping like I said right there uh, I think we'll put that on after we adjust the hinges this one there needs to go forward just a little bit and that one just needs to be down okay uh, yeah we'll save that um, okay the fenders like I said there's a little bit of a rust bubble on this one here uh, but not bad But I'd have to grind it all out weld in a piece of metal um, This is the driver's side here this thing is all dented up right here Even right in here You stand it up all in here uh, I don't know but it should be I showed that other fender but it should be rust free so I'm not sure whether to use uh, these fenders or patch the ones that are on it now the uh, 
passenger fender is good. There's no dents on it. I think we'll definitely use this one because we got that big rust hole in the passenger side. But what I'm going to do is uh, paint all the jam of it. Paint all, paint all in here, here. Uh, probably the wheel wells. These wheel wells are going to be less rusty than them ones. And oh, I can feel that sun. I hope it don't get too hot. Or I hope the clouds come back. <laughs> uh, this radiator support. Just these two body bolts here. Uh, and then we'll have to take off all the... Uh, these bolts for all the brackets there 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 and uh, we're gonna pull this out I don't know if this is bent it looks a little bent but that might be the way it's supposed to be I'll look at the other one uh, let me get this off I got the condenser shouldn't be held in there too strongly uh, let me take this core support out and we'll bring it over here and paint the core support, two fenders, and then this hood, if I can find a spot for it. Uh, I don't know if it's got the uh, insulation on it or not. Yeah, it's got the insulation pad. We'll take all that off and paint all underneath the hood. So I think that'll be, uh, that'll take a while. So yeah, I'll just paint all them parts. How you doing, Nikki? Wanna say hi to everybody? You wanna say hi to everybody? How's my pretty girl doing? You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. She gets a little bit of sun right in this corner, right in the early mor or about 10 in the morning. But she got some shade over there. You okay, Nikki, Nikki? Nikki's such a good girl. You're such a good, good girl. You're such a good girl. You're such a good girl. Nikki's a good girl. You're a good girl. You're a good girl. Nikki's a good, good girl. Okay, be a good girl, okay? <laughs> okay. Um, somebody commented, Dixie Restoration something uh website has this rear filler for 109 bucks <clears throat> now so i went to it there's no, there's none on ebay i didn't think anybody made them because <clears throat> if they did it would be on ebay you would think uh so it's on the dixie restoration site for 109 but guess it's oversized cheapest shipping is 86 dollars so basically you're looking at 200 bucks. I don't think it's going to be worth 200 bucks for that plastic piece, but I guess it is available. Uh, so, and somebody posted, oh, that, uh, oh, what's his name? The Canadian guy, anyway, he makes stuff for something. Fiberglass parts. I bought... A rear spoiler for the 78 Aspen RT from him. Uh, he has this Laguna front end, although it says last one available, and it's a race one, so it's fiberglass instead of Enduro, I guess. I'm not sure. But I don't know what it was 495 bucks plus freight shipping, and he's in Canada. Can you imagine how much that's going to cost? And but the, it's just plain. You get you know it doesn't include the grill, doesn't include the bumper reinforcement, doesn't include the headlight bezels, headlight buckets, uh, you know, all the stuff. So yeah, it's that's too much anyway. Uh, so yeah, I'm not going to be looking for any of that stuff. Like I mentioned last video, it's not going to be a a Laguna front end. Okay, 
Uh, I think that's all I wanted to go over. So, yeah, the doors are done. The doors are done. Other than we're not going to put the weather stripping or the door panels on until after them hinges go forward a little bit and final adjustments. So then we can pop them on. Now, later on, not right now, probably wait till if I'm working in the dark. We're going to clean up these door panels, sand them, and the passenger there, driver's there, and uh, paint them with the uh, vinyl paint that I got. Uh, don't know when that die. We got a couple of days delay from the post office, July 4th and 5th, I think, closed. Um, and we'll try the die. Now, that die I ordered, I've never used it before. Uh, some people say it's great. Uh, had a comment said that uh, if it gets wet, it'll leave your it'll leave uh, red stain if you're doing it red, leave red stains on your clothes, or if you're sweaty and hop in there and sit down on the seat that's been dyed, it's gonna leave all red on your skin. So that it probably ain't worth a shit if it's gonna do that, but we'll try it i don't know we can try it on the back seat because nobody's going to be sitting back there uh but yeah i'd hate to put it on this seat and sit in it and have all red all over so i don't know we'll try it, it was only 10 bucks for a 7.5 ounce that might come in i think everything's supposed to be scheduled coming in monday but it's saturday now i'll probably finish this video in the next couple of days uh, just got the doors done. I just want to paint all these jams, get a good, get a good uh, head start on this front end. Because next video we're going to swap all that front end over, radiator support, fenders, hood, and probably get into fixing. And I don't know if I showed you the firewall lately. No, not the firewall, but the, see this, see this area right here. See, this is solid, but this is all rusty here, rusty here, and we don't know what's underneath. It's one another reason I want to take the fenders off. We don't know what's underneath the firewall down here, so we might get into some surprises. Uh, but yeah, basically we got to unbolt all this front end, and we'll uh, we'll do that next video. Make the whole video about the front end. Okay, so. Anyway, I'll come back when I get these parts ready to paint and stuff like that. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, out here at night, July 6th, and they're still lighting up fireworks. <clears throat> they just now stopped, but anyway, I'm driving around on the scooter, just checking out, make sure there's no fires. <laughs> there's about five people around here for lighting off stuff. Okay, so I sanded up the fenders, took the wheel moldings off, and emblems and marker lights and stuff like that. Uh, sanded them down. Started on the wheel wells here, but uh, I don't know which wheel wells are better. I might wait till I take. One's got a dent in it. They're not rusted through or nothing. But uh, June bug just landed in my hair. But uh, we may wait on them. So I haven't painted them yet. Okay, so I got the uh, door panels here all sanded, wiped them down with reducer, and uh. <clears throat> Sanded off all the, it's been sprayed before. You can see all this stuff here. So I sanded it down pretty good. Uh, I'm not gonna paint this. I don't think. I got one can left. One can left. So I'm not gonna do below here. This gets tucked in behind here, and it's not that faded. 
So we're just going to do that top, that top, then these two. Then we'll see what's left over. Uh, I'd like to do that insert, but I think it's going to take too much paint. I did get the vinyl dyed in. Uh, writ. Uh, I haven't read the instructions. That's mainly for that I'm going to do the seats with. But yeah, we need to do this strip here. Uh, I did the back panels with the paint, but like I said, there's we're not, we're not going to have enough for this twenty dollars a can paint. It's just a little bit in this. We'll see what. Oh, we need to. Uh, so I got the bulldog adhesion promoter on there. So let's put a. Put a coat of this on there. Hopefully keep it from peeling. Okay. Like I said, we just got a little. You know how much is in here. It should cover pretty good, so. get away with two coats I'm not sure put a couple extra coats on this other stuff here and we'll just do that these were just black and filthy that reducer really took a lot of black off same with up here yeah just with a paper towel and man it was uh just coming up black Then we'll just cover some of these bad areas. A lot more in this than I thought there was. <laughs> Okay, let me put a couple of coats on that and I'll be back. Okay, guys. I put a couple of coats on there. I had enough to do the inserts. That way it'll match the back ones. Uh, and there's a little bit left uh, for touch-up. So I think that's good enough. I think that's all. <laughs> Need to paint. Uh... Like I said, maybe tomorrow we'll try out this dye and paint these jams black. Okay, I'll be back tomorrow. Okay, guys, next morning. Okay, uh, I guess I showed these. I got a couple of coats on there. Painted the inserts. I think that's good. Okay, um, let's try this dye. This is uh, seven... It actually says 7 ounces. The thing said 7.5 ounces. Got it off eBay. Uh, about 10 bucks delivered, shipped, all tax, all that stuff. Uh, it's called Racing Red. Some other ad for colors only had some other type of red. Didn't have Racing Red. This listing had Racing Red. So I don't know what the difference is. But anyway, just read the instructions. Going to do absolutely no good for what we're doing. We're dying these uh, inserts on the seat. 
Uh, the instructions are uh, th there's three gallons, three gallons of water. If you're doing two adult size t shirts, three gallons of water, almost boiling, and add half of this in there. And that, that's what it requires. Half of this to do two t-shirts. So apparently this is good for four t-shirts, the whole bottle. Uh, and then put the t-shirts in the big bowl, your three-gallon bowl. I don't know who's got a three-gallon bowl. And then stir it for 30 minutes. Then, I don't know, drain it. Then warm water, stir it again. Then cold water, stir it again, all that stuff. So obviously we're not putting this in a bucket and stirring it. So we're just going to uh, wing it. I guess I could probably watch a video on it, but, uh, you know, I ain't got time for that. So we're going to kind of guess at what we need to do. And, like you know, it's not no show car. It's not no customer car. So however it turns out, it turns out. Okay, I already took the little cap thing off there shake it really well so how much should we add in to just this we, we, we don't know but probably not much but we we got this to do all the seats two front and the two back right now we're just testing on the back back bottom so i don't know we'll just uh put in that much Okay, got a stir stick here and a sponge. We're going to try with the sponge to apply it. So, you know, if it's too light or it doesn't work, then we'll add more, more color. And it says, it says don't get in your eyes or drink it or any of that stuff and put it on your skin I got a rubber glove here so we're going to uh, put it on with a rubber glove okay we'll just uh, I don't know of course this is almost boiling water so I don't know how they expect you to uh, You can see some dark red down here. I know he painted all, a lot of the interior. I don't know if that's from painting the interior or the original color of it. This one just pretty hot. seems to be okay but like I said some people in the comments uh, said it'll come off on your clothes if it gets wet and if uh, hop in there is sweaty I guess if you got shorts on got sweaty legs it'll stick to your skin so I, I guess what we're doing here is just uh, putting it on just leaving it on we're not doing none of the rinse three steps of rinsing uh, all that stuff so maybe that's why it comes off because like I said you're supposed to do the uh, rinse it with warm water then cold water and but I don't know how we can test it after it dries. Oh, well, I don't know how long it's going to take take to dry doing it this way. Ah, that sponge is pretty hot. And I don't know if we should do another coat, whether that would help. 
after this dries. It's semi sunny out. We can stick this out in the sun and let her dry. Well, it looks good. Uh, okay, well, let me do the rest of the seat and I will be back. Okay, guys. It looks pretty good. We don't know how long it's going to last and the, whether the sun's going to fade it whether it's going to wear off quick, any of that stuff. Uh, but, you know, it's cheap. Cheap enough to take a chance with. Okay. Uh, started doing the back. So we got to do the front here later on. Not right now, but... So I did this side, so you can see the difference. This... Uh, this headliner keeps falling. I keep gluing it three times now. This Loctite spray glue ain't worth a shit. I like it for the uh, rust neutralizer, but their spray glue sucks. Anyway, I just sprayed it up there again. We'll see if it'll stay. Uh, so anyway, I had to, this is the second batch. I should have enough to do this. So that's how much I'm using. And yeah, we'll we'll just see. Okay, I'll be back. Okay, guys, there it is. Looks pretty good. We'll see what happens. Like I said, the sun fades it out or something. Uh, later on, we'll do these front ones. And yeah, that vinyl spray. Uh, glad I left some touch up some of this stuff here on both sides just little touch up areas there should be enough there to make the whole interior look good and it's got that uh it's got that dash cover you can buy them new for about 40 bucks i don't know what the uh plastic cover cost but this is uh this is the cover he had over top of it but of course that's the bottom that's what it should look like but look at that so we're going to try some of the dye on that we'll clean this up real good and try some of the dye on that uh, that'll be the first to go from the sun if it ain't worth a shit <laughs> uh, but yeah this I'm going to set it out in the sun here and let that really dry dry to the touch and we'll see if it comes off or I don't know Okay, uh, like I said, I'm not sure about the wheel wells yet, you know, mainly because this has got a lot of whole extra holes in it for cruise control, uh, stuff like that. And these ones don't look to be that rusty. Those look worse. <coughs> so anyway, just for now, instead of painting this, we're just going to paint the uh, fenders. I already washed them. Get all the inside dirt out. Mainly, a, there was a big wasp nest there with about a dozen wasps. And I sprayed that wasp killer and it was all oily. Anyway, I just brought it over there, washed it, soap and water. And we're going to paint all the jams and all the inside of this with some black right now. So let me do that and uh, I'll be back. Okay, guys, got a little paint on this. We we'll said we're going to paint it all. Spray all the back of it, spray all the jam area, it's going to be showing. This gun ain't spraying worth a shit, it needs to be cleaned out, but...
Okay, you get the hint. Let me uh, spray these two fenders, put a couple of coats on, and I'll be back. Okay, guys, I just got one coat on there. I'm gonna, I gotta mix up some more paint. Put another coat on, flip it over. Do the inside of them hinges. And yeah, I'm leaving the hinges on there because uh, it'll just be a little bit easier. Okay, got the back seat out here in the sun. That's uh, still kind of wet. Over the following episodes, we'll see how this die works. But like I said, it's cheap enough. Ten bucks for that whole thing, and that'll do shit. That'll do all the seats. I don't think the carpet needs to be done, but that cover on the dash, like I said. Uh, so yeah, that's way cheaper than buying 10 cans of that $20 stuff. Okay, uh, I think we'll leave it at that. We got some vinyl. I just went ahead and put the switches and ashtrays and everything back in these. Uh, like I said, once the uh, doors are adjusted right, when I get the front end off next video, we can put all this on there. Uh, and I, I think it's I think it's going to look sharp. I think it's going to look good. Um, so yeah, like I said, next video is the front end. I didn't get to the radiator sports, only a couple of bolts. I'll take that off and uh, I want to get this up on jack stands or drive it up on ramps and I want to show you all the rust holes <laughs> in that other radiator support. Uh, it's just that I don't look forward to taking the radiator transmission lines, AC lines and all that off, but we'll, we'll do it. We're, we've gone this far. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way this door fits, both doors fit. Uh, like I said, just the hinges a little bit, just a little eighth inch. That way, she's done. Uh, I had a couple of comments of, uh, oh, you're just, all your cars are half-ass and uh, sitting around, and I like the other guys better. They're more fun. Uh, yeah, well... But I will say 99% of the comments are, are good. So thanks everybody for the good comments. But uh, uh, I don't think this is half-ass in it. I mean, I don't know how many YouTubers would paint the inside of their quarter panels and fenders and protect it for, I mean, most of them will just self-tap the thing together and get it done in a week so they can get that shot of them driving down the road in their death trap with that shit eating grin on their face and collect their 10 grand I mean that's that's half assing it uh, this isn't half assing it or else you know if I wanted to make the big bucks and half ass it that's what I would do but no we're, we're spending our time that's why there's so many episodes from start to finish uh, start to finish on on almost all my builds right from the beginning when I get it to uh, mechanical suspension interior paint and body always ends up at the paint and bodies at the end so that's the way my videos are not not very exciting but at least, you know as long as you can take something from it uh, if none of you tried that vinyl dye well that's you know pretty good deal vinyl paint painting parts so yeah, we got quite a bit done. Power doors, if you never sw swap them over from manual. You know, you take something from it. That's, uh, that's all that counts, you know. If you want to just hear jokes and watch some guy drive a death trap, yeah, there's other guys that are more entertaining. I'm not an entertainer. So uh, anyway, just thought I'd mention that. Uh, yeah, like I said, we got a lot done. A bunch of little stuff. Next video, we're going to start. I'm going to uh, turn this around, pull it up here, so I have more shade during a day. It's actually got a little cloudy now. The sun was beating down right there. It's usually up to about here by now. It's almost probably 11 or noon. So I turned around up front here, and uh, we'll take the whole front end off. Fenders, hood, uh, everything. And... Uh, Hopefully that'll be it.
I mean body wise for replacing parts after that we'll get into stripping the hood's gonna have to be stripped roof for sure uh, yeah there's dents on both of them there's dents on the door basically after we get all the parts replaced then we'll get into the bondo work straighten it out put it in primer getting it ready to paint all that stuff that'll take a while too so <coughs> Okay, guys, so uh, subscribe if you haven't. Bottom right-hand corner of the screen. It's free, doesn't cost anything. Like, comment, share, all that stuff. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next video.